Hello everyone and welcome to episode 7 of Lost Gets Unhinged. I've made a few changes up here as you can see, I'll go through them momentarily. Now I've had these guys running again because I needed some steel, because I want to make the steel tank downstairs. So I've been throwing some steel through there. I've actually run the quarry three times, it's doing its fourth one now, which is why you see all of these barrels filled up etc. Um, and where they filled up I've made a couple extras unless it's crap like the dirt and cobble and stuff which is just getting voided. Uh, I've been going through the chests like so, gathering anything that's worthwhile like the Certus Quartz because that stuff's awesome. And I've been dropping it all in here. I brought all the rest of the gems and things from my chest downstairs along with all the metals. So you see we've got loads of quartz building up there, so the ME network is going to be our next task. Chests here filling up with uh, stuff. I made an extra chest obviously to store more, but then I switched to barrels because there's, well, as you can see there, nearly two barrels full of iron. I've got a lot of metal. So materials aren't going to be much of a limitation at the moment, but we'll keep the quarries going. Try and keep it running constantly because we will be needing tons and tons of stuff. Now, I've, I ran two of the quarries in the water out there, and I've moved it now to a desert because I want lots of rubies, because you need rubies to make uh, chrome ingots, and we're going to be needing an awful lot of chrome. So that was my plan. Uh, anything else changed? Nope. Oh, I've moved all the saplings and stuff from chests downstairs. There's still tons of stuff in chests down there, but we'll get the ME network set up first, and then I'll just shift it into that instead. Right, so we're going to do Mistcraft today. Uh, oh, it's Ascend. <laughs> uh, I get lost in my own building. Right, so I've knocked up a quick writing desk. I've got a crafting table handy. Now, in the last few episodes, I've been doing a lot of exploring. found a couple of villages. Uh, I've been th doing some uh, Twilight Forest stuff as well to pass the time. I've got a few pages. It's nowhere near enough, but when we're going to be wanting a shit ton. An absolute shit ton of these pages to make some decent ages that we want to explore but we should have enough there for a relatively stable world I've made two there now the idea is to go into a mistcraft age and search for more pages now I have found the best way to do this is in either a flat world or a cave world I think cave worlds my preference so we'll be doing one of those now we need oh we need another notebook leather so we need some leather Note in there. Three leather, make a notebook. Very handy. Pop the notebook in here. But we need a link panel as well. Remember how to make those. Like so. Nice and simple. So, link panel. Why wouldn't you go in there? I'll put you in there afterwards. Okay, so we need we need a biome. What biome do you fancy? Mushrooms and uh, plains. I like a plains biome. So we've got a plains biome. Now we want. Where was that single biome I saw? Single biome. So plains biome, single biome. Your biome is your uh, modifier. Your single biome is the description bit. I forget the technical terms for these things, but always put the biomes before the. Put the actual name of the biome or type of biome before the biome controller. Okay, so other than that we will be wanting a few things. Uh, standard terrain, because why not? Uh, let's have anything else just to make it more complete. Uh, normal sun, why not? We don't want anything to add instability. Caves, why not? Cave world, now that's the important bit I think. So I think that should probably be enough just to get us started. If we go over to our book binder, we'll pop the link panel in and then the rest of those. And it's that simple to create an age. Now you want to use as many um, descriptive pages as you possibly can. We're obviously quite limited, so that'll be the one we're going into. Now we need to take a link book with us so we don't get lost or stuck I should say. Need a bit of leather now. So link page, unlinked linking book. Right there. So this is going to bring us back here. We've got all we need. 
Got a notebook for storing stuff. Weapon, armor, yeah, jetpack. Okay, well let's go adventure in this uh, Mistcraft Age here. Now, fingers crossed, it's relatively stable. No effects that I can see. It's raining. <laughs> it's raining indoors. Is there a way out? Awesome. We should be going up there momentarily. Let's turn this uh, noise off. There we go. Wow, this water's messed up. Do you know, I've never made a cave world that was actually open at the top before. Now, we want to keep an eye out for instability, really, because that would utterly ruin our cave world for us. Okay, so let's go up the top there. Oh, what's that? Hunger. Oh, we can live with hunger. We've got 38 steaks on us. Let's get out the top of this world. There we go. We're on top of the cave world. Any other effects? No? Marvellous. We can live with these. Now, what you're looking for... Can we see any here? No, we cannot. We're looking for a small building made out of cobble. What are those? Well, they're the... Um, Obsidian obelisk things, aren't they? It's not what we're after. Could come in handy at some point, no? If we ever need obsidian. Well, they're saying that we've got a barrel full of obsidian. Right, now, if you get your mini map up, like so, make sure you're zoomed out as far as it'll go. Like that. Now, if you head in a diagonal direction like this, you'll cover much more area on the mini map, as you can see. So you're just going to want to run in a diagonal direction until you find a building. Okay, one of these guys is what you're looking for. If you look on your mini-map, you see the uh, the square just north northeast of me. That is exactly what you're looking for, and it's much easier to find them on the mini-map, especially if, you haven't, if you've got low render distance. Inside these guys, quick check up top, make sure nothing's sat up there, like a creeper or a skeleton. And here are your pages. So there's one, two, that's actually very few, but, well, most people are aware of this now. But hidden in one of the corners can be a chest. Got the right corner first time. Awesome. With more pages in. So we go. Now this hunger bug's actually quite bad on this world. So, well, I'll carry on a bit, but I think it's probably going to work out better to make another one. Well, I made another cave world, as you can see. Uh, it's near enough the same, use planes by them and everything. Uh, I may have put them in a slightly different order. Either way, it's, it's quite random how they're filled in. And this world appears to be very stable, which is awesome. Also yellow stars, quite pretty. But I think it's permanent dark. But it also seems bright, which is a plus side. Now, I don't have any emeralds on me, but I am going to rob you, buddy. Thank you very much. Do these guys have chests hidden? I don't think they do. No. Oh well. Let's see. We've got a village nice close by anyway, that's always handy. Was there any other buildings worth looking in? What are you? No, just a bookcase. No, whoa! That's a lot of creepers. <laughs> Bugger you guys. Alright, get that thing up, and we'll start running again. I think this one will do for now. I'm on my uh, fourth trip out now, so this will be my fourth linking book I use. But let's head on in here grab a few more pages. Just a quick check. Right, I've actually... I've actually gathered an absolute ton of pages now. We just have to have a good old sort through. Awesome, this corner again. You'd have a good sort through, find out uh, if we've got enough stuff to make the ages that we need. And we should have, because I've come across quite a few things Let's empty these out quickly. I've come across, or I certainly remember seeing quite a few pages that I wanted, including the dense ores, which is awesome. Also, I've come across lava block, which was the one we were after. Now, I think I remember getting standard terrain. That was definitely one that we wanted. But anyway, let's head home. Doesn't really matter where we do this from because we won't be coming back again. Well, we might do, but not right now. <laughs> As we see over here, loads. I think this notebook's got tons in as well. Oh no, that one's empty. 
All right. Anyway, loads of pages dumped in here. Now I'm going to sort through these off camera, and I'll find the ones I want to make my lava world, so we can get a permanent source of lava rather than having to travel to the Nether all the time. See if we can't get ourselves a nice big lava ocean. Okay, we're about set to write another age. It also occurred to me that I kind of rushed through this a bit. So for those of you who don't know Mistcraft at all, I'll go over this again a little bit more in more detail. So over here we have the book binder. Now this is where you'll make books. Now you can put uh, pages straight in here. You do of course need a link panel, so we'll grab another one of those from here. So to make a descriptive book you would put a link panel in, add some pages, etc. And then take the descriptive book from there. We're not going to do that just yet, so we'll grab these back out again. But this is what you do to make the books. That's, you put the leather in here, obviously, and you can name your book up there if you wish. Now, over to the writing desk, I'll go over this again. You put paper in this slot here, you put ink vials in this slot over here, and as you copy pages, the ink will run out and it will replace itself with more, another bottle and put the empty down there. Now, in this slot here, you would put a notebook. Now if you put a notebook in you'll see the GUI change there. Now you can right click on pages and that will copy the symbol. So you don't have to find them every time. You just have to find them once, keep them stored on this side and copy a fresh page when you want to create a new age. Now over here you have you can put different notebooks. So we can move this notebook over here if we wanted to. Then click on the tab there. Then we could put pages in this notebook if we wanted to. Like that. And if you middle click it will rearrange them for you. So we'll take these out because we don't want them in there at the moment. And that notebook was going back in there. Um, obviously, each notebook, you can rename them to, say, biomes or colours or uh, blocks. Name them to whatever you want. There's plenty of room in here to store loads of uh, notebooks, so you can organise it as best you can. Okay, so these are the pages we had before. Now, I've cherry-picked a few symbols, which are these ones. I'll go through them in a second. We'll start off with the biome, we want an ocean biome, which is this one. Right click, and it'll copy a page into our notebook there. And it's going to be a single biome, so right click that as well. So hopefully we should have just a massive ocean world, in theory. Now, we'll add a few things to make it uh, semi-stable. The more you add, or the more detailed you can be, the more stable the age is likely to be. So we'll add some dungeons. Some mine shafts. Um, did I get anything else yet? Villages. Villages <laughs> in an ocean biome. Awesome. Okay, now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. We're going to be wanting to use a standard terrain, but before we use standard terrain, we will want to use a lava block. Where are you? There he is. So if we put a lava block in, which is a modifier, and then we use standard terrain. It should replace all liquid from the standard terrain with lava blocks, which in theory should give us a lava ocean. In theory. <laughs> uh, okay, again, you could put, um, say, endstone or iron ore blocks before that, and it should replace all solid blocks like dirt and cobble with iron ore or endstone or what have you. Now, if you want a, a really detailed tutorial on Mistcraft, I couldn't make one much better than uh, Direwolf20 if you want to search him up on YouTube. He's got a very up-to-date tutorial on Mistcraft and it goes into much, much more detail than I do. So if you want some more specifics, go there. Uh, so we've done, we've done our biomes, we've done, added the extra bits and I said a few fun things. Cloud colour. So what colour do we want the clouds? Let's have blue clouds. Uh, I did have something else, didn't I? Uh, normal sun. Well, let's not have it quite normal. Oh, sunset colour as well. Okay, so let's go for... Did I have another colour? I believe I did. Yellow somewhere. There we go. Yellow sunset. Yellow normal sun. So put the modifier first before the description. So obviously yellow colour, then normal sun. Uh, we'll add normal lighting as well, and I think that's everything. So we'll grab our notebook out now, go over to the book binder, put your link panel in first. Now if you pick up your notebook and right click, it'll empty all the pages in there for you. And then in theory, we have an o a lava ocean world. I 
certainly what I want it to be anyway. Let's grab a link book quickly. So link panel, bit of leather. A plus side of doing the searching for all the pages is that I got the chance to kill loads of uh, animals. So I've got plenty of leather, I've got plenty of uh, chicken meat and feathers and beef. So we're sorted. Now let's set him up. We'll bring us back here. Fingers crossed. There was some massive lag when I created this well, so I logged out and logged back in again to let it load up a bit. But we seem to have achieved our goal, and that is to make a lava ocean world. I'd love to be able to see how deep the lava actually goes. I guess we'll wait until the pump's working. Oh, it's charged. I can live with charged. Any effects? Not that I can see. Awesome. So this is where we're going to get all of our power from, and I'm genuinely chuffed with it. <laughs> Fantastic. Right, let's head back and we'll see what we, if we can sort out this pump. Okay, before we head off and set this new pump up, we're going to build another tank. Now, as I told you, I've uh, processed loads of steel. I've also made lots of steel plate. There's more upstairs if I need any more. Oh, now we need those as well. So to make your steel tank, you basically, the basic tank wall is just four like that of steel tank walling. I mean, all these recipes are in any eye, so there's no need to go through them. But I am making them, so I thought I'd do it now. We'll be needing some of these, which are the valves. Did I get that wrong? There we go. We only actually need eight, so I'm not going to waste any resources on them now. Uh, we don't even need eight. You technically only need two. <laughs> uh, we also want to use some glass. So we'll pop some of that in there. And then we've got some glass, and then just make more of these, there we go, that should be plenty, if it's not there is more, oh, I've got more there anyway, more steel plates. Now the railcraft tanks, you can put these valves and you can put the, the glass with the window bits, you can put them absolutely anywhere except the outside edges, so the basic frame has to be made out of the tank wall. The uh, steel tank can be uh, dyed when you make it, much the same as that was dyed blue with lapis, actually. But I didn't have any lapis on me, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. Let's pop it in here. Now the max size is 9 by 9 and 8 tall. So I'll build this frame up quickly off camera. Okay, here we are with a very basic tank. 9 by 9 in width and depth, 8 blocks tall. Now if we complete it with two more bits of tank wall here, You'll see that it's formed a multi-block structure. You can right-click on it anywhere to see how big it is, or what it contains. And this holds 20,736 buckets of any liquid, which is double what the iron tank does, even though they're the same size. But we haven't put any gauge, which is the windows, and we haven't put any valves, which are these things here in it. So the tank's next to useless. <laughs> you can't even put anything in it by the way, it is completely hollow. If you were to leave something lying on the floor inside and you make the tank, it won't form a multi-block structure. So make sure it is completely empty before you seal it up. Let's actually, let's dig this out quickly. Here we go, and we're gonna replace this with the, the gauge. Not for aesthetic purposes, but if we can just look at it and we can see how much lava's in there. You see over here, I've taken my jetpack off. You see how it's ever so slightly underneath the top. It's not quite filled up as you are. You can see it there as well. But you can tell from a distance that you're not running out of lava anytime soon. Now to put things in and out of the tank, you will need the steel tank valve, which you will put anywhere you want to put things in and out. You see I've sort of spread them out around this one, but it's being pumped out of one right there. Anything going in or out must go through a valve. So we'll spread these around, much the same as we did on this one. So one's there, one's there. Bloody, there's a random starvation bug. I think I've mentioned it before, where you will just, all of your hunger bar will just empty immediately for no apparent reason. I think it's got something to do with uh, Greg Tech adding an AF, uh, anti-AFK thing. But for some reason it works whether you're AFK or not, which is annoying as hell. You'd be surprised actually how many people die from it. As soon as like, I've just been hit by it there, chances are likely that someone will starve to death in a minute because they're AFK. <laughs> Here we 
go. Let's pop those on. And we're going to put one on top as well. You see that's where it was pumping in before. Oh crap, there we go. I got it. So we'll pop one in the top for pumping in. Now, actually I need a load of liquid ducts. I'll go grab some of that quickly as I've got plenty. I don't actually have plenty of liquid ducts at all, so I thought I'd nip up here quickly and make some. I've got some hardened glass there, which is a plus. Now we've got plenty of liquid ducts. Let's chuck that copper back in the barrel there. Like that. And head back downstairs. And we'll put in liquid duct on there. How high is that? Oh, can we can go up one more. There we go. So can you walk across the top of liquid duct? that make life a bit easier. No, no, you can't. Well, typical. Do this the hard way then. Far actually, the gap wasn't so big. So we'll attach you up to the liquid duct there. Sorry, the tesseract. If you go in the tesseract, it should be lava storage, so easy to recognise, owner only, set to receive only. But it will receive through both sides of the tesseract, I believe. In theory. Now we'll go set this pump up and that will fill that up. We'll have to connect this up to the output pipes as well, or run some more if we're not getting enough lava through, but we'll come back to that. Now let's head off to our lava ocean world and get this set up. Okay, built a platform over here. Now as the lava runs out in an area, we'll just move further along, we can go in any direction really, but we'll keep our linking box set up over there. Now, pumping stuff from the nether, sorry, from a miscraft world, much the same as pumping from the nether. Place your pump down, knock out the ground underneath it, and you'll see the uh, thing should start to drop. There we go, lovely. Now, unlike in the nether, in the nether I used magmatic engines to pump the lava out, but here we're just going to use the energy tesseract. So this will provide the lava for our power room, and our power room will send the power back for this to work, which is awesome. So let's pop a bit of liquid up to on top. And then we'll stick the tesseract on top of that, which will be the no, the liquid tesseract. There we go. And then we'll pop an energy tesseract down there to power the pump. Okay, sweet. So set this to owner only. You see lava storage. Make sure it's on send only and set frequency. So that will send to the tesseract in our lava storage room. And then power like m m very much the same as the quarries, set it to owner only, receive only, magmatics out and set and there we go, it started pumping. Completely forgot about the world anchor, we'll pop this guy down here, chuck a few ender pearls in him, so sort of this area will stay nice and loaded for us, keep pumping lava back. I wonder how long it would take to fill that massive tank, <laughs> hopefully not too long. Uh, do you think the lightning's gonna will affect our stuff if it hits it? I hope not. Well, I guess we'll find out, won't we? All right, let's head back. We'll head downstairs, make sure everything is working properly. Oops. Yeah, see, loads of lava coming in. 85 buckets already. Sweet. So it is going to take a while to fill up, and you should be filling up as well, right? still pumping out to the engine slowly. Jump that back on. But we're probably going to repeat this and have another two another two steel tanks down here. We'll have to expand that way a bit and then replace this one with steel ta a steel tank as well. Because then we don't need to worry too much about keeping a Mistcraft age loaded up. We can just get loads and loads of lava at once and then let it just leave it switched off for a while. Okay, well that covered the very, very basics of Mistcraft. Um, gave you two perfectly good examples of what you can do with it. I mean, your mind can run wild. And we use one which will make Miscraft easier because we'll have all of the pages eventually. And two, uh, <laughs> found a way to throw off some of the shackles that Greg Tech places upon us. And I think we're going to call the episode there. Have a good time, guys. Take it easy.